everybody, Zoe FPV here, and today we are at the bench. We have a pile of stuff to go through and to unbox. And I'm pretty excited because everything that I have today is going to be 3D related. Well, 90% of it anyways. Uh, so without further ado, let's get on to the bench. So the first thing we're going to need is a trusty tool to open this with. And I'm not even really sure where I want to start with yet. So I'm going to start with what I kind of already know and love. And um, so this package is from California Quads. Uh, this is not a sponsored package at all. This is something I have personally bought in and love. Um, and uh, we'll go into chat. So right now it's kind of uh, just me and the camera. I have uh, the whole chat thing turned off. We'll go into open Q&A in just a couple minutes. So thank you all for joining me live if you're watching live. And if you're not, hey, thanks for being here. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all those good things. So what is in this box? <laughs> I have two frame kits. This is the California Quads Flying Bear 01. This is one of my favorite frames, if not my favorite frame. Let me actually go grab you a demo of it so you can see what it looks like built. Um, this is really an unplanned video. I want you to kind of see everything as it happens, as it happens. So this is the original Flying Bear 01 prototype. Uh, it's super awesome. I love this thing for 3D. It has a very tight center of gravity, a uh, very low profile. It's a stretched X, which I find actually works better for 3D because your center of gravity is a little bit more well adjusted. Uh, the only difference that I made for this frame that makes it better for what I do is I lifted the top deck five millimeters, which puts the center of gravity in line with the 2010 motors. I love this frame. If you're getting into 3D and you want a good, solid frame that you're going to love, the California Quads Flying Barrel 1 is great. It's only, I think, $60 on sale right now. So if you want one of these, go over to California Quads, pick one up. Tell Ken Liu that Zoe sent you because I know he would appreciate getting some promotion. Uh, so actually, yeah, let's go into one of these frames right now. Kind of show you all the details. So a lot of people don't know um, a lot about California Quads. Uh, they're kind of a newer company here in the Bay Area. Started by Ken Liu, Flying Bear FPV. He is a uh, engineer at Google, and uh, he actually took part-time work to do full-time FPV. Uh, and in the process of doing that, he wanted to build a better frame, something that he could personally use and something that he would love to fly with. So out of that came the Flying Barrel 1. You have 5mm thick arms, super, super durable. Uh, you have the bottom plate and top plate. These are super tiny. So the bottom plate or top plate, I mean, this is absolutely tiny, okay? Uh, the build on this is very tight. I mean, this is uh, created by the same person who helped produce the Pixel phone for Google. I, I believe it was the Pixel. Don't quote me on that. I do know he was involved in it, and uh, he was an industrial designer for it. So you have a really, really good design philosophy in this frame. It's not for the faint of heart. It's a very tight build if you're a newbie and this is your first time building something. Uh, unless you build this with a 4-in-1, I would say, you know, try something a little bit more spacey, something that has a bit more room to move around in. That being said, I love the Flying Barrel 1 frame. It's pretty freaking awesome. And uh, gotta give love to Ken Liu. He is a great pilot. And his frame, and he's not just a great pilot, he's a great designer. And that combo is really hard to find. It's really hard to find a designer that's able to push the limits of their designs and then take that direct feedback and create something better. And that's what Ken Liu's done. So you have uh, TPU canopy mounts, super durable. Um, the only thing you'll see on this frame that generally breaks are gonna be arms. Even though they're five mil thick, if you're running the 2010 motors, it's a really heavy motor, and it puts a lot of stress on the arm and crashes. That being said, it's a two bolt design to replace it, and it's just as simply as unscrewing two screws, and then popping the arm out, putting a new one in, and popping in two screws. Um, they're countersunk on this, so you don't have to worry about um, essentially holding the bolt in. 
super easy to put together. I'll be doing a build video on this very shortly using KISS V2 uh, flight controller and ESCs. And then I'll be doing another one on KISS V1. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be it for the Flying Barrel one. I'm going to go out and do another unboxing here shortly. But in the meantime, you're going to see the outro. So if this is the video you're watching non-live, thank you for watching. I've been Zoe FPV. You've been awesome. This has been the Flying Bear 01 unboxing video. Uh, we'll be going into a full frame build here shortly. And uh, yeah. Support a Wookiee on Patreon. Watch your land views. Follow social media. Social media. See the world from a brand new perspective. 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 That's our objective. Boy, Zoe. Flying drones. Building out a paradise. Creating new things. Long flying drones. Zoe. Flying drones. Building out a paradise. Creating new things. Long flying drones. Zoe. Flying drones. Building out a paradise. Well then, if you want to support more content like this from the Flying Wookiee, please leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, follow my videos on Airviews, become my patron on Patreon, join the conversation on Discord, and as always, I've been Zoe FPV. Thank you for watching. Tune in next time. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thank you for indulging in that little cut up. So if you are tuning in live and you don't know what I'm doing, that is essentially me filming a live build video and now we're gonna go into open Q&A. Um, so if you have any questions about what you just saw, now is the time to get into that. I'm gonna open up chat again, so if you have against reality. To say, now is Set. the time. One of the most sympathetic FPV pilots out there. I really enjoy your oh, content. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Mr. Spat. Hey, Mr. Spat. Said, what up, Zoe? Just doing some build videos. FPV. Said, A G. Square FPV. Said, what time is it for you at? Terrace? So, anybody have any questions for this frame before we move on with the build video? Said, or move on with the awesome. unboxing? Terraces. Said, zero seven zero seven. J dot Jones FPV. Said. Ow, oh god, ow. <laughs> I just started using Crossfire. I mained it the other day. I've got a video coming up um, that includes me using Crossfire. It's in the edit bay right now, Said. so uh, yeah. Oh, damn. Um, I'm not sure if he makes any other sizes with this. Does he make other sizes? Candyman 1800 Gar. Um, he does make another version of the frame. He makes a race version of the frame. Um, but I'm not sure if he actually makes any other sizes. So I'm just gonna put away the frame real quick. I was gonna, like, just throw it to the side, but I figured that would be stupid. And then I'll start having parts get everywhere, and then nothing will ever be found again. So... Uh, I opened up the screw packet. I should not have done that. That was a mistake. East side, Tony. Hey, Tony! Easy. Okay, I'm putting this shit back the in here. Gekin FPV said, Does he have swag? Tornado Girl FPV. I'm not said, sure if, um, hey, Tony. California Quad sells any swag. He should. I love his logo. Okay, that is now put away. For another day. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, again, we're doing like a live build video, so everything is going to be kind of swooshing along. Thank you all for tuning in right now. So let's get on with the show again. Welcome back again. We're doing another unboxing video today, 
And right now we have the Zappy 120 frame. That was upside down, but you know what? This is a 3D frame, so upside down is not such a bad thing. This thing's a little different. You know me from my 3D flying primarily, and I love the heck out of it. And lately, my 5-inch rigs have been getting louder. It's been getting harder for me to fly in places that I love. And I've been wondering, could it be possible to build a 2-inch ripper of a 3D setup? And in my chat room on Discord, people stepped up and Terrasis has hooked up the channel with this. And several other people in the build channel at Discord are also going to be building one of these frames. So let's unbox this frame, get into it, and see what it's all about. So packaging on this is really simple. It is a uh, simple, simple, simple envelope. It weighs like nothing. If you got this, you'd think you ended up just getting a regular package in the mail from a fan. Um, this came all the way from Australia. I'm really excited for this frame because it's, well, different than what I'm used to. I, I've generally only flown on 5-inch because 5-inch 3D has been where it's at, um, as I'm making a total farce of opening this up. Um, but I've been pondering, is it possible for us to do a proper 2-inch quad? And this is the result. So we've got the Rocket Quads paperwork. Ooh, oh, whoa. Okay, that's pretty cool. That That's cool packaging. For just being in an envelope, that is pretty rad. Okay, so what we have here, and this is going to go into, this is a pure cut frame. It has been unfinished. So I'm still going to have to finish some of these edges off to get it fitted properly. The biggest thing you'll see here is we have four parts. We have the main frame, two screw holes per uh, motor mount. Let me get out a uh, scale so we can measure out everything. We have a pair of sleds. This is what you can attach your camera to and your VTX in between. And then we have a sled kind of... I don't know what you call this, a bracket that kind of holds it all together. This thing weighs, I think, a total of like four grams, which is incredible. It's made for three inch to two inch props, so you can ha handle fairly decent sized motors. As you notice, it has only two motor holes. That's to reduce weight. And again, on micros, especially stuff on the scale, every gram matters. Every gram makes a massive difference, especially when you don't have obscene amount of thrust to overpower you. Let's see if we can open this up. Oh gosh, I'm going to I'm going to break this. This is not going to be pretty. Uh, oh god. Okay. <laughs> Get all these pieces off. I actually kind of like I like how it's packaged even though it's a little weird to rip it all apart to get it out. I'll dig it. So, let's weigh this mainframe and see how much we have here. Okay, six grams. That's not too bad. So I was definitely wrong about the initial weight. Let's put everything up on the scale. So we're looking at eight grams. And again, this is for a brushless build. We're not going with a brushed build. This is going to be something that's going to be completely brushless. It does a 16, it looks like 16 millimeter to 20 millimeter mounting holes. Um, that's really handy if you have, uh, depending like, like a tiny fish flight controller, and ESCs and or something else that's similar. Um, as you can see, the frame, it's very, very uh, delicate. There is uh, not a lot of space on here. That being said, it's really sturdy. Like this is an incredibly stiff frame for being as uh, small as it is. This looks like four mil carbon fiber. Yeah, this, I believe this is actually four mil carbon fiber. So that's freaking awesome. And the whole idea of doing this is to build a machine that essentially you can't hurt anybody with flying 3D. And I can fly anywhere that I want. <laughs> so with this 2D 2-inch uh, build, I'm hoping to unlock a whole new world of possibilities. Stay tuned for a build video on this. I'm currently waiting on, oh, it's 3 millimeter, um, Trassa says, not 4 millimeter. Stay tuned for a future build video on this frame. Um, I might be doing a giveaway on it after I get it built. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and uh, until the next episode.
Okay, now we're back. <laughs> Thank you for indulging in that. Um, I'm Zero turning back on chat. Feet. If you have any questions Set. for the Rocket Quads, Why is now is the time. Evolving except DVR? It's especially needed for the micros. Number void in the market. I don't know, really think there's going to be an evolution in the DVR scene for micros. I know Runcam is looking at it. And people are definitely getting more and more into the brushless builds. I mean, this is a lot cheaper to get into. It's a lot more safe. It's a lot of ways more fun. You can fly them in a lot of different places that you can traditionally fly a traditional machine. And that's why I think something like that is pretty cool. Um, we're, we're losing viewers. I guess people don't like the unboxing videos. Well, anyways, they're missing out because we have the piece de resistance left. The big box of stuff. What is in here? That is the biggest question that I have to answer. And uh, if you're just tuning in, there actually might be a giveaway within this box. That is Life the biggest zero thing. So, LOL. Um, anyways. Arrow FPV said, How do you set up for 3D? Do you need special motors or anything like that at Zoe FPV? Yeah, don't Arrow need any special FPV motors. Said, I think it's cool get to see what's new and what's out there. So yeah, um, to get into a 3D FPV, really you just need to enable 3D mode on your setup. Uh, and a video that should be coming out soon, I 3D'd Mr. Steel's original Alien setup. And surprisingly, it flies good. I mean, it's not as good as a proper 3D setup that has really torquey motors like the 2010s or 2207s. But it does have the ability to switch quickly enough to be smooth and for it to be fun to fly. So, yeah, KISS is the biggest thing for 3D. If you're getting into 3D, KISS, Flight Controller, KISS ESCs, the programming on it supports 3D a lot better than BL Heli and Betaflight. That being said, Betaflight is trying to come more around to 3D. They're supporting it better, and I expect there to be more 3D support in the future for that. Um, and that's kind of what we're getting into on this next project is beta flight versus um, KISS and what are the differences? Can KISS perform or can beta flight perform as good as KISS? Those are questions that I want to answer. So in the quest to do that, we have a one last unboxing video and that's going to be it. And I'm sorry the format's a little weird like having the intro and the outro. Um, I might change it up in the future depending on how you think uh, it should be, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Um, I know today... Eastside Tony said, full tuck. <laughs> kiss all the way. Yeah, no, I mean, it's... I, I like Kiss. It just works better. I've, I've tested Kiss versus Beta Flight over the years, and hands down, Kiss wins every time. Um, that being said, I have nothing against beta flight nor the developers and I really wish they would work more on the beta or the 3D code base so we could have better 3D capabilities across every machine, not just KISS machines. Um, but yeah, so let's get into the final video here. Uh, it's doo -doo -doo, intro, I need to start recording intro. <laughs> What's in the box? Today we find out what is in the biggest box of the day on the bench. I have something special and it's actually kind of a funny story behind this. Um, and we'll get into that shortly. But first I want to say thank you all for being here with me today. Thank you all for being part of this video. Like, comment, subscribe, all those amazing things that you do. And now let's get into what's in the box. So Immersion RC, okay, so I should back up. The story behind this is on, on my birthday, I had openly joked on Facebook, hey, Immersion RC, Flyduino, wouldn't it be funny if we had a 3D RTF? And boom, this is what Immersion RC ended up sending me. And also Flyduino, they sent me, both sent me gear to try to build a 3D mojo, essentially. 
So in the box, I, I'm pretty excited for this because I have never flown one of these. We have the 3D or the Mojo from Immersion RC. Uh, this is an awesome, awesome RTF setup. Uh, it's a distilled version of what Immersion RC has been working on over the years. A lot of pilots have put in a lot of work to make this machine the best it can be. And I'm excited to fly it once in 2D mode and then swap out 3D mode on it and see if I can get it to fly 3D correctly. Considering I just got Mr. Steele's build to work, I'm hoping I can get this one to work. Um, and so this is going to be my new pet project. I want to try to create a setup that can be easily sold as a RTF. If we can get the settings right on this machine without having to replace the hardware, then Immersion RC can add an update to their existing frames and their existing kits that will allow 3D mode to essentially unlock via an OSD setting. Alternatively, maybe a kissed out Immersion RC Vortex. I, that'd be something pretty fucking sexy, if I think. Uh, apart from that, Immersion also sent a bunch of their Tramp HG VTXs. Uh, I'm really excited to test these against the uh, TBS uh, HV VTXs. Um, so yeah, that's going to be something else we'll be testing. This is the only thing that's not 3D related, just VTX related. So let's get into the box proper, right? I, I want to see what's in the box. Thank you again, Mersion RC, for sending this out. It really was a, a joke at first. Well, it wasn't really a joke so much as a dream. I've always wanted a 3D RTF on the market. Um, I think the, one of the hardest things in getting into 3D mode or 3D is just having a reliable and easy working setup that newbies can get into. And apart from that, also having a setup that is really hard to break. And the Immersion RC Vortex, especially the Mojo, is an extremely durable machine that can take a lot of abuse. So that is one of the biggest reasons why I thought it would be great to be able to work with Immersion on something like this. Now, whether the project goes completely off the ground, I don't know, but I'm really hoping that we're gonna be able to work together in the future to make this a virtual, real virtuality. Yeah, I said it. Um, so let's get into the box proper. And unfortunately, it's raining right now, so I can't just go out and fly this thing and start on the project immediately. Uh, so, yeah, how do we even open it? And then Zoe cannot open the box. Fuck it, it's done. It's broken. I can't open the box. <laughs> Seriously, how does this... Oh. Okay, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Okay, so we've got ourselves some HQ props. It looks like our old school 5x43s. For those that don't know, these have been one of the most standard propellers in all of um, FPV for a very long time. Uh, back in Nationals 2015, Steel ripped the sky apart with um, the 5x43s from HQ. And they're still, to this day, one of the better propellers that you can get for a mini quad. HQ props are very lightweight, very, um, I don't know, high end, you know, as where some other brands might be more durable, HQ, you get pure performance. Um, let's see, we have little ribbons here. It looks like we have a receiver wire to connect our receiver up. Uh, oh, that's handy. A little washer so you can actually like tighten up the antenna. That's neat. I like that. I like that. Got ourselves an extra battery strap, which I'm assuming is probably for our GoPro up here. We got foam, which looks like it's going to be for the GoPro seat. We actually have the drone itself. Dang, son. Okay, this thing is this thing is hella tight. I I was I was not expecting to be this impressed. Okay, so immediately though. <laughs> Before I even got this in the box, before I even unboxed it, I had things I already wanted to do to this frame to make it more 3D friendly. Uh, Vortex right now says they, their center of gravity is completely neutral. I think their center of gravity is actually a little bit below center. Uh, because you put the battery up here, your prop line is pretty high up, and that means most of the weight of the frame is down low. 
Now to change that, I think all I'll have to do, all I'll have to do is um, take these arms, mount them down lower on the frame and essentially flip over the arms so this is on top and that this is on the bottom. That way it'll lower the motors down on the frame. It should make the center of gravity much more neutral for 3D and much more friendly to fly in that way. That being said, I'm gonna to try to fly it in 3D mode without doing that. I wanna see what the differences are in the frame, having a lower center of gravity versus a higher center of gravity. And in a lot of ways, this is gonna act as my test platform. So this thing feels solid. So when you open up a drone, one of the first things that, at least when I've, I've, I've opened up a few RTF kits, the feel of it. This thing feels nice. It has chamfered edges on the carbon fiber, so it's not sharp. It's kind of soft to the touch. It feels incredibly solid, like you're not having components shift around. The uh, front deck here for the camera has protectors on the carbon fiber, which will help with splintering and absorb the, on the impact. And on top of that, because the carbon fiber is laid down flat like that, it absorbs most of the impact dead on, on the best access for strength on the carbon fiber. So the camera, actual like camera up here is incredibly well protected. Amazingly good design. I love what they did with this. Um, and Dan, this is a lot smaller. So let me go pull out the original Vortex because I have that sitting around. And let's do a comparison between the old and the new because what is an unboxing video if not, you know, be able to compare a little bit. So we have the original Mersion RC Vortex. Uh, pretty solid shit. This is kind of what helped get a lot of people into the craze initially. It was really easy to set up. It had an on-screen OSD that allowed you to change your PIDs. It had a lot of features that we take for granted today, back before they really existed. And they kind of kept within the same theme. So these look very similar, but they are incredibly different. Uh, this frame is more spread out. This one's more centrally compact. You can see the side-by-side -side differences there. Um, the camera is the biggest thing. The original Vortex camera, I really did not like how they had. Plus you had a CMOS camera that wasn't, in my opinion, the best camera. Um, and the way that you held your GoPro on board, it was just kind of meh. The way they do this is extremely refined and very, very simplistic. So that's a win. Uh, the fact is you have the antenna instead of popping up from the top, which if you don't have a GoPro on top means the antenna is straight up and in a crunch point in a crash, it's coming out straight out the back here. So there's less of a chance the antenna getting stressed out and crashes. So there's been just off like the cuff some definitely good design decisions put into the Vortex Mojo. Um, the actual deck itself looks like they scraped off a good 5 to 10 millimeters off of it, so this is much more slim compared to the original Vortex. Let's compare the weight on them real quick, because uh, that's really one of the biggest uh, things on these, is the weight. The weight ultimately uh, tells you how agile the machine's going to be. You know, even if you have thrust, agility is still largely based on the weight of the machine, so let us weigh these machines. Okay, zero out. So we've got the original Vortex weighing in at a total of 413. So while not super heavy, it is definitely not the lightest uh, bird in the air by a long shot. Let's get the mojo up on the scale. Wow, holy crap, they, they cut off a good 70-ish grams of weight. So this is this is incredibly, incredible deal lighter than the original Vortex. This is much, much more in line what you would find with a traditional mini quad and what I would actually be more used to. Um, if I can compare this, if I have it nearby. So I'm going to show you all what I've been personally flying, which is that. So that's 384, and that's with these giant 2010 heavy as F motors. So compared to my own personal freestyle quad at 384 grams, this is incredibly light. 
Of course, it doesn't have remotely the same kind of motors. Um, yeah, we only have the 2206, but a 2206 is more than enough to do 3D with, and I quite honestly start recommending 3D from the 2206, from a 2207, a 2306, um, essentially anything more than a 2205 will get you there. Um, lower KV is better for 3D. These ones are only at uh, 2300 K. Oh, no, wait. Yes. 2300 KV, so that's a really good deal for 3D. I run 2400 KV on my own personal 3D setup, so um, considering that it's lighter and that it has um, roughly the same KV on the motors, it should feel really good in the air. Um, anyways, that's been the unboxing video of the Vortex. Thank you all for watching. I've been Zoe FPV. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all those amazing things that you do. Uh, thank you, Immersion RC, for sending out the Vortex Mojo. I'm really excited to get into this thing and to see if I can get this set up with 3D proper. Uh, it feels incredibly durable in the hands compared to the original Vortex. And the original Vortex felt really good. So kudos to that, guys. Look forward to more videos on my channel using the setup. And thank you all for watching. I've been Zoe FPV, and until next time, stay tuned. Support a wookie or a pink on. Watch your name, views, file of social media. Social media. See the world from a brand new perspective. Perspective, perspective. That's our objective. Yeah. Yeah. Zoe, flying drones, building down in marriages. Creating new ways, blowing things on Zoe. Flying drones, building down in marriages. Creating new ways, blowing things on Zoe. Flying drones, building down in marriages. Creating new ways. If you want to support more Okay, and I'm back. Let me turn chat on. Where FPV said. Next. Next, LOL. Yeah, I'm not sure I really have anything else to really unbox anymore. Um, yeah, so th this is a really weird format. Thank you guys for being with me today. I know that wasn't necessarily the, the same thing you've expected. I've really never done unboxing videos before, so I suck. Quite honestly, I need to get better at them. Um, I really want them in the future to be really quick, really to the point. I don't want to lollygag on stuff too much. I want to make them super short, like two to five minutes max. Um, and yeah, and the live stream is just, I mean, if you want to watch them, they're there. They're up on the live stream. But later on, when, for example, when I get more flight videos with this done, I'll release the unboxing for that a few days before I release more footage with this. Terrorists. Um said how do you resist opening everything as it arrives it's Where hard <laughs> it's very hard to resist said, opening everything before it arrives you did great uh the whole thing 4997 said <laughs> i open stuff before it arrives terraces said yeah nothing wrong with those vids smiling face with open mouth well i mean like for especially the rocket quads group said Amazon. Amazon. If you go to Amazon, there. If you type in the five zero three zero three D propeller, you'll have a pop up for basically eight sets of propellers for like twenty bucks. Um, they're essentially the same brand as the Racecraft propellers, but I still have been unable to find the original Racecraft three uh, D props that I've been using. So if you want a good 3D prop, Amazon. Uh, AliExpress has some 2D or 2-inch 3D props. I still have yet to find a 3-inch 3D prop. So yeah, that's... It's hard. There's not a lot of 3D props on the market. Uh, on the 5-inch, you have APC with some dual blades. You have Master Aeroscrew coming out with the tri-blade. You have Gemfan Master Series 3D prop that I helped them design. And then you have the Racecraft 3D uh, 5030 tries. So on the 5 inch market, the 5 inch side, you have some options, which is great. But if you're looking into getting into anything smaller than that, especially when you're getting into like the 2 inch stuff, it's pretty limited. Um, yeah, not that anyone really cares about that. There's like two people. And if you want to get more information on 3D, check out the Discord link in the description of the video. 
Um, Discord is where I hang out at, uh, basically a daily talking about stuff that I'm doing and what I'm working on. Uh, it's free to join. It's just kind of fun. Yeah. It allows me to have a conversation with you all while I'm not having a conversation with you all. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Wax fire um, said you should design your own props. Oh, I have, I have, um, and I've gotten them made. I just, I haven't, I don't know. Like this is probably something that's good for the live stream. I, I am not out there to make money off of selling shit. Like, I feel like as a pilot, once you cross that line of hawking your own gear, essentially, or hawking someone else's gear, and I've been there because I've been a sponsored pilot, it takes the love out of what you're doing, and I don't know, I feel like if I was to make 3D props for money and profit, then I would start trying to push those 3D propellers on you. And that's not something that I want to do as a person. I want to be able to review what's on the market. I want to be able to work with companies on 3D props. I just don't want to sell them. I can't find them on Amazon. Let me see if I can pop up the... I actually have a link right here. <laughs> Oddly enough, I have a link right there. I don't know if it'll allow it to be posted or not to Zoe the group. Said https slash slash www.amazon.com slash triglades propeller quadcopter helicopter soul slash dp slash v01gmug2hg slash ref equals sr underscore one underscore 18 srs equals 14175445011 and ie equals utfa and qid equals 15207490051 and sr equals 8-18 and th equals 1 Okay. Drone Lovers Portugal said, Hey Zoe, today is the worst day since I got started with FPV. I got jumped by three guys while I was flying and almost all my gear got stolen. My goggles, my radio, two micros and a bunch of batteries. Square Damn. FPV said, LOL. Mike Sheets said, Well, Daniel Moore said, LOL. Yeah, I've had friends that have been jumped before for their gear. That's, it's not scary. Uh, one friend, she was uh, flying and uh, actually saw the guys coming at her with her goggles on while she was flying and it was too late by the time they were basically up on her by the time she was able to like pull in by that time. Drawing on the earth. They were already kind of mugging yeah. her. So. If the props are good, you have every right to push them to the community. Drone Lovers Portugal said, I hate this freaking country. Whatever happened to the sexy My beast? Sheet <sighs> said, Whatever happened to the shakesy beast? Sexy beast still lives. So, I don't know. I got burnt out on the speed challenge for ASL. Originally, it was supposed to be a quarter mile Dry in a straight line. Set. Um... Instead of being a quarter mile in a straight line, it was a quarter mile and a twisted quarter mile, which wasn't even a quarter mile. Uh, so essentially, I was unable to get the sexy beast up to full speed in the raceway. Um, on top of that, I had some issues sourcing some parts for it. I was trying to build two of them, which is a lot of parts to build two of these machines. Um, the Tattoo ESCs and motors do not handle 5-cell. At least the original ones don't. So I was trying to run it on 5S, and that was just not happening. Um, but yeah, the sexy beast still lives. It still flies. I have two of them right now. Um, it just, it just takes so much battery to fly it. And quite honestly, it's an unruly machine. Like it, it, it's meant to go one speed and in one direction. Um, but yeah, I'll probably be doing an unbuild video of one of these or I actually take one apart and I show you everything that goes into a sexy beast. Okay. Back on the chat. <laughs> if chat's still working. But yeah, and always fly with a spotter. That's another good thing. Um, I get paranoid if I fly alone, to be honest, especially in my city, because, you know, stuff like that does happen from occasion. So if you are flying with a spotter, at least you have a bit of extra protection. But even then, my friend Angelo is Daniel flying with a Oh, God! Said. So loud. Portugal that really sucks. Hope you are able to get your that gear was so loud. or get new gear quickly. Ma. Ma. Glad that you are Mike Sheets 
Oh, that was so loud. LOL and unbuild would be awesome. Tornado Girl FPB <laughs> said, Hello, sexy RC people. <laughs> hey, Tornado Girl. Yeah, so unbuilding of this. I was going to do an unbuild of it during the 24-hour live stream, but I got caught up trying to build and make another machine actually work. So instead of doing an unbuild, I just left this on the bench. Um, yeah, I love this machine. I, I had spent literally a month of my life dedicated to making this thing happen. And it was a great project from start to finish. It started out Tornado as an idea. I have a disc coming in tomorrow. And uh, it started out as just an idea, and then it evolved into an actual project. Um, and it went from start to finish, and start to like actually having a canopy and everything working for it within about a month and a half. So a lot of rapid prototyping went on. And as you can see, it's actually a plus hexacopter. You don't see a lot of those. Um, and it's kind of like a warp hex. Let me see if I can open this up and show you inside real quick. I was really disappointed with this project. I wanted to continue working on it. I'll probably pick it up at some other point, but X-Class got in the way and other stuff got in the way and it just made more sense to put it away for now. So yeah, it's a pretty simple build. Um, I don't know. I, I'm thinking I'll probably release the files for the, the whole thing soon so people can cut out and build their own. I don't think it's going to be something I'll ever sell just because... I, there's not really a market for it. I mean, this is a dual battery hexacopter. It's meant to carry two batteries at a time, and it destroys those fucking batteries. So, I don't know. If people want to build it, if you want to build one of these, contact me. I will help you get the files, and I might even have a frame for you to build. Um, but otherwise, it's going back on the shelf for now. Um... But yeah, so yeah, there's a lot of things. Let me turn on chat again. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've got a lot of stuff on my plate, as always, and I tend to bounce around from project to project. So if you're watching one, something, you're like, oh, why hasn't Zoe done that in a while? It's, cause it's probably hit a wall with it, and I'm like, meh, this other project is easier to work on, so I'll go work on that for now instead. Um, it's a, it's an issue of mine. I've been that way since I was a kid. I would start something... I would get it mostly finished, and then I'd be like, eh, I want to go do this other thing now. Um, I've been a lot better about it, especially with my video editing and content. Uh, there's only a few projects that are currently stuck in limbo. Mike Sheets said, yeah, that's wild. Are there voltage regulators and ESCAs, etc., from collective... Ah, shit, it's Pi Day. Like it's Pi Day, people. We need to celebrate. Said, Okay, it's Pi Day 2. Arrow FPV said, I hear this is messed up. This batch caused everyone is having problems with them. Uh, I don't know why. What? Where is that coming from? Oh, derp. I'm an idiot. Bjorn Ragnarsson said. Hey, yes. Bjorn. Welcome to this show. We're kind of just like wrapping up right now. I'm kind of doing a post stream Q&A. Uh, if you have any questions, now is the time to let me know before I go insane and stop the stream. Um, we filmed three unboxing videos, one of the Vortex Mojo, and... Uh, Terrasis yeah. said, It doesn't line up for us, but your date reads right yet? What date reads right? I don't even know. Proper FPV said, I feel your pain. I lost a quad with a GoPro and footage scheming the waves on the ocean oh, and no. giant redwoods on thousand mile road trip. Still crying about it. That sucks. That sucks. I, I, I have a story like that. I am... Um... Terraces. <sighs> hey Zoe, which motors did you end up deciding on for the Zappy rig? I, I think... and someone asked me. I think I chose the 1104 7000 kV motors for the Zappy rig. Um, Daniel Moore yeah. said, it's only 3 thirteenths here. Pi Day is tomorrow. Hey, you guys just it's told me it's Pi Day. Days. I get to actually have an official excuse not to do anything, okay? 
I'm celebrating Pi Day, guys. I'm sorry. I was going to edit some shit, but no. I need to celebrate the Pi Day. Thought so. Uh, but realistically, I didn't even know if I was going to stream today. I was feeling absolutely sick, and I thought it was not going to happen. Um, I have not had a morning like that in a while where it felt like my body West was literally fire. trying to kill itself. Said. It's a 14. Here is this. <laughs> Told you, Pi Day, yes. it's here. God damn it. I told you because it's Pi Day here. See, this is the issue with having a fan base all over the world. You all are on different time zones and different clocks. Like, Trastis is in the future. Like, that guy comes back with stock yes. tips and stuff and tells Pi me Day things tomorrow, that I shouldn't know. Yeah. Terrasis said, It's 14 slash 03 slash 18 smiling face with open mouth. Terrasis said, you guys are just behind the times face with stuck out tongue and moving <laughs> said, LOL. Uh. Wax fire. Said, ha ha ha. Terrasis. Said, ha ha Okay, ha, well, ha. I guess on that note, I'm going to end the stream, guys. Thank you all for coming in today. Um, I've been Zoe FPV. You've been watching me doing unboxing videos. Um, I know it hasn't been the most entertaining of streams and everything you watched here today will be elaborated on in the future. So thank you for being here with me on this. If you want any more information on any of the builds that you just watched, please leave a comment in the comments, leave a like, subscribe, all those good things. Um, join the discord group. We're doing a group build with a bunch of people in the 3D chat room that I have in the Outer Limits Discord group. If you want help or information about getting into 3D, that is the place to go for it. People are in there chatting about it all the time, and we have new builds being presented, like, constantly. Um, and I gotta say, I gotta love my fans. Like, it was because of you guys that I got into the 2-inch. It's because of you that I'm even trying to do an RTF. I mean... If I was just trying to make it, you know, something that I do, I wouldn't care about educating you all and trying to make it accessible for people to get into. Um, so one of my biggest goals for 2018 is to make 3D fun and accessible to everybody. And hopefully you'll be along for that ride. So thank you for watching this video and tune in next time. I've been Zoe FPV and I love you.